This video is sponsored by Rockler. So tell me if this sounds relatable to you. At the end of a long work day, you pick up your favorite food on the way home and you set it down on the coffee table. Wash your hands, turn on the TV, and you can't wait to see that new episode on Disney+. Plus. And then... Ah, uh, yeah, the struggle has been real. My wife and I love watching a good show or movie while eating dinner, but over the years we've been sitting on these tiny baby chairs just so that we can reach the food in a comfortable position. Yeah, I know, uh, first world problems. But I finally got around to building one of these lift top coffee tables, and this particular one has two lift tops to accommodate our couch. So let me show you how I built this guy, starting with the case, which was designed to be made with one full sheet of three quarter inch plywood. I of course went with walnut for this because after years of woodworking, it's still my favorite. And over these years, I've made a habit of collecting long and thin offcuts from solid lumber. That way, when I'm working with plywood, there's always a bunch of these strips available for me to use as edge banding, which is a blessing with the cost of lumber nowadays. Now, these are only applied along the edges that are visible once everything comes comes together, but because of the way the case is constructed, it's pretty easy to apply these along the wrong edge, speaking from experience. Now to help you guys out with the build, I've made free plans available to download from Rockler's website, which not only includes the cut list and step-by-step -step instructions, but also an exploded view to help you guys better visualize how things come together. So a huge thanks to Rockler for sponsoring this project and making all of this possible. I'll have a link to those plans in the descriptions below. So after letting the glue dry for about an hour, I took the boards out of the clamps and flushed everything up using a flush trim saw and a black plane. I know there are a lot of different ways to flush up edge banding, and most of those are probably quicker than using a hand plane, but there's just something about seeing the wood curl up out of the hand plane that I just find absolutely satisfying. And it's little things like that that makes this hobby really enjoyable for me. And if we're not enjoying what we're doing, then <laughs> what's the point, right? Anyway, once I got the boards all cleaned up, it was time to cut the dados for attaching all of these panels. This table is laid out with a partition here that splits the case roughly a third along the length with two short panels on either end, inset from the bottom edge. And then there's another partition here that splits this longer section a third this way, leaving a cubby for storing magazines and books. And since this case has a bunch of stop dados in it, I use my router to make the cuts. And if you take a look in the plans, I mentioned that I position the panels the way that they will come together during assembly with the front edges flush against each other. That way I can cut the dados through all of the panels at the same time. And this is, I think, the best way to ensure that all of the dados will line up during assembly. Now, I use my festool track as a guide for my router, but any type of straight edge will accomplish the exact same thing. So just use whatever is available to you in the shop. Now, once I've got all the dados cut, I attach the two side panels to the bottom panel first with just a simple butt joint. And to help reinforce everything, I used Rockler's new and improved dowel jig. The very first thing I ever bought from Rockler was actually this older version of the same jig. And the first thing I noticed with this new one is that it's a one-piece design, which makes it a lot more rigid compared to the previous two-piece design. And they've added layout marks and tabs on the ends that really help to get much more precise with my cuts. Now, if you've never I've never used dowel jigs before, especially for case construction. I made a two minute tutorial video on how I use this jig to assemble this particular case. And you can find that on the product page of this dowel jig on Rockler's website, which I will link down below. Check that out if you want more details on this step. So with the side panels mounted, it was time to attach all of the partitions. And I started with this one that runs from front to back because the distance between the dados in this partition and those in the side panels are what will determine the final lengths of the rest of the boards. So instead of cutting those panels to the measurements in the plans, I'm cutting them down to size by referencing the mating pieces. Doing this will drastically improve the fit between all of these pieces. And this is just one of those simple little techniques I learned early on that I felt really leveled up the quality of my builds. So if you're new to woodworking, 
give this a try. I think you're gonna be pleasantly amazed at what it's gonna do for you. Um, so once I've got the case glued up and in clamps, it was time to make the top panels. And, well, it's a, it's a coffee table, and I don't know about you guys, but we put ours through a lot of abuse. So obviously, I'm gonna build them out of solid walnut. After breaking the boards down to their rough lengths, I ran them through the jointer and planer to clean up the surfaces and get the edges squared up. Now, I milled these boards down to about 20 millimeters, so just slightly over three quarters of an inch thick, and then I edge glued them to make the panels. So on top of the high lumber prices, these days, it was also really hard for me to actually get my hands on these walnut boards. At least it was during the period when I was making this coffee table. I think I waited more than two weeks before one of the stores actually got some of this in stock, but I don't know, maybe it was just my bad luck. I'm mentioning this because I wish I had more selection to choose from just so that I could have done a better job at matching the grain, but it is what it is. Now I glued up a total of three panels. Two are for the lift tops and one for the top of the cubby. And once again, I cut these panels down to size by referencing the actual measurements of the case. Since the top panel for this cubby is fixed, that's what I attached first because, <laughs> well, it's the easiest one to do. And once again, I use dowels for this to ensure a really strong bond so that in the future, nothing is gonna go popping off for whatever reason. And it helped with keeping things alive while I tighten the clamps. As for the two lift tops, in addition to having this lip, I also added a finger hold along the edges because it just looked unfinished otherwise. I cut these using a router bit that's meant for cutting bowls and trays. In fact, cutting finger holds is all I've ever used this bit for, but I think having this little feature just makes it so much more comfortable to use and it adds a lot to the aesthetics. Now, it might come off as a surprise when I say that the most frustrating part of this build was attaching the lift top mechanism. So attaching it to the case was pretty straightforward. I just used a scrap piece of wood as a spacer to position it so the top of the bracket is flush to the top of the case, and then just screw them in. But the difficult part was attaching these panels to those brackets because there was no good way to line up these panels to the case and then still be able to screw the brackets in from underneath. So the only the only way to do this was to measure the bracket hole positions in relation to the case and then transfer those measurements to the bottom side of the panel before drilling the corresponding holes. And finally, just cross your fingers and hope for the best. I somehow managed to get everything lined up, keeping about an eighth of an inch gap between the panels for wood movement, but there's got to be a trick to doing this. And if you know of one, please comment down below and let me know. Um, so yeah, with basically the hardest part of this build out of the way, it was time for the easiest part, and that's making some legs. Now these are probably the most basic ones I have ever made on this channel. There are no tapers, no bridle joints. These are essentially just sticks glued together, but they're really sturdy and have that clean and minimal look that I was going for. So after milling and ripping the walnut down, I cut them to length based on the final dimensions of my coffee table. I used dowels to assemble these pieces to form two rectangular frames that are each 8 inches tall. And to keep these from racking, I connected them with two stretchers on top and one on the bottom. I'm not gonna lie, these legs are pretty boring, so to level up its appearance, I cut this groove along the top outer edge with a rabbiting bit. I learned this from Chris Salamone. It takes maybe 5 minutes to do, but it just adds so much by creating the separation between the legs and the case, making the top look like it's almost floating above the legs a little bit instead of just sitting on this boring frame. And as usual, I went with figure 8 clips to attach the legs to the case. One end of the clips will sit in a recess I drilled in the legs with a Forstner bit, while the other end would directly attach to the bottom of the case. So this will allow the legs to expand and contract while still remain mounted securely to the top. And finally, I applied a few coats of Wipon Poly to all of the surfaces. 
purposes. Now, I went into this project thinking it was gonna be this really complex build for some reason, but if you take out the two extra weeks I spent waiting on lumber and the time I spent filming the Dow Jig tutorial, the build itself, including all of the filming, took me a little less than a week. Of course, I didn't do any fancy joinery or whatever with this, but still, you know, with me having a full-time job and working on this only a couple hours a day throughout the weekdays and a little longer on the weekends, all those productivity classes finally paid off. Now, one of my favorite things about this project, for me at least, it was actually using the Stalgic. And I'm not just saying that because they're sponsoring this project, but this opportunity gave me the chance to put away my more expensive tools and quote unquote, go back to the basics. Because if I didn't get this little push, I would have gone with my dominoes for sure. It was a really good reminder that while having expensive tools is nice, the cheaper and more basic tools are just as capable. Anyway, this video's getting pretty long, so let's end it here.